Hey guys, so I'm working on this tutorial for you. Uh, this is something that's probably gonna drop in a week or two. Um, but in the meantime, I've been getting a lot of comments on how to use the camera sequencer. So I thought I would show you maybe two, three shots that I'm gonna make for this video um, and kind of teach you the basics of how to use a uh, camera sequencer. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is get a camera. So if you go up here to this little box and click plus, you can scroll down to cinematic and uh, click Cine Camera Actor. Uh, I'm gonna throw this into the cinema. And if you actually right click it and go to pilot camera, everywhere you move is how the camera is going to be moving. Um, so to start off, I'm just gonna change some parameters for the camera before we move over to the sequencer, just so you know what's happening. Um, so there's a bunch of different parameters. Uh, DSLR is a full frame camera. Um, whereas digital film is basically more of like a Super 35 or a ASPC. Uh, um, it's really just sensor width. So it's just showing you that it's, you're gonna see more for uh, the same um, focal length. So I'm gonna change this to 22 because I want this to be a nice wide shot. Um, I'm gonna try and key in how I want it to look. And then I am going to the crop settings and making this 2.39 and then I'm going to make the squeeze factor 2. Um, if you don't know what I'm doing, basically I'm just tricking the camera to look a little more anamorphic. So yeah, um, once the anamorphic is set up or once the uh, once your camera is set up the way you want it to be set up, uh, what you do is you go up to this clapperboard and you click add level sequence. Um, I'm going to change this to LS um, cavern and click save. And then again, I'm gonna bring this up into my cinema folder. Um, so now that it's here, if you go over to track and do camera actor to sequencer, you can then add your camera. Uh, so right now I am using uh, Cine Camera Actor 3. I can click plus and now it's added. Um, so the first thing you wanna do before you do anything is set up where you want the camera to start. Um, this is a little too far. I kinda of want it right here and get the framing and everything right as you're piloting the camera. And then if you go down here to transform, there's these little plus signs. These are what add and um, these are what add keyframes. So I'm gonna click right here to add a keyframe and then I'm gonna go at the end of our sequence right here, zoom forward uh, as much as I want it to be zoomed and maybe bring the camera up just a little and then click add again. So now when you click play, it is going to follow how that camera moved. Perfect. So for the next shot, what I wanna do is add another camera. Uh, so I can go up to Cine um, and then cinematic camera actor. And now I have another actor added, but it's not in our sequence. So what you wanna do is click on the camera. Um, you can again, do the same different changes you want as last time, move it how you want it to be moved. Um, I'm going down here because I want all this to be anamorphic. I really want to try uh, playing around with that idea. Um, so 2.39, squeeze factor 2. And then I'm going to make you maybe 28. And let's just have you low to the ground and kind of strafing across. So we'll have you start right here. And then what you want to do to add this to our camera sequence is do the exact same thing as before. Um, but this time you want your playhead to be at the end of where your last uh, cut occurred and add in your camera. Now that the camera's added, there's one annoying tricky thing to this is it's not actually added to the camera cuts. As you see, there's no actual shot here for the next piece for your next camera. So what you wanna do is also click this add camera button and do six. And then now you see the shot right here. So if you go back to camera actor six and you kick plus where you want it to be, and I scroll across to maybe right here, uh, move the playhead or it'll shoot you back to where you were. Also, if you, um, you can move around using this, uh, sometimes you get lost, you can change the numbers depending on how you want them to change. So if you scroll out pretty far, it can get a little confusing. So it helps to change this to zero and zero. That way you're starting at the very beginning of your scene. Um, and then the other way you can um, move this is actually by right clicking and dragging across. So basically be like a little hand that can help you move. I per personally like zooming in and uh, right clicking to move. So now that this is added in, we can move the playhead across 
and then do another transform. And we would love the camera to move, but I didn't move the camera, unfortunately. So we can go back here, click, and then I will move it across and add. So now it has changed and we'll be moving. So now that's what it looks like. Let's make this drag out a little longer so it looks a little more cinematic. Um, even if it's just an example, we can always make it look a little better. That's still a little fast. Again, I'm using the plus and minus sign to scroll out and then right clicking to drag across. And now we can just keep pushing it, maybe go to 250 frames, almost just slightly triple it. Perfect. And then we can grab you and move you across. What these um, red and green markers are, uh, in case you never use an NLE or an editing software, uh, the green is where when you render it, this is going to be where it starts. And when you, uh, this is gonna be where it stops when you render it. So you always wanna move this across, especially if you're exporting because you don't wanna waste time exporting 120 frames and realize you didn't export everything you want to export. So make sure that's always at the end. Um, now we can watch our second camera go across. Perfect. Now, as you can see, as I click play, it's not showing the first camera we set up, it's only showing the second camera we set up. Um, so this is where these little camera icons come in. So if I click this camera icon, it's gonna show me this camera. If I click this camera icon, it's gonna show me this camera. So now it's showing it move, and then it's still showing it even though we're on the next camera. To fix that issue, what you wanna do is actually click right here to the camera cuts. So once you're on the camera cuts and click play, it'll show you both cameras. So this is the first camera, and now this is the second camera. Really good to note, especially when it comes to viewing your different shots. Um, that is how you would view it, is click both cameras. Uh, the last thing I wanna teach you guys is more about keyframes. So I do wanna make a note is you can pretty much add anything you want um, to be animated. So if you wanna add anything, uh, just go to track, uh, you can attach um, different cameras to your camera. You can attach audio to your actual sequence. Uh, you can attach an event. So say halfway through this shot, I wanted to have birds flying out of the trees. That's how I would do that. Um, you can change the aperture, the focal length. These are all just basic components, but you can add more to it if you wish. So you can go up to here to uh, focus settings. Um, my personal favorite is post-process settings. This is where you can change different color gradings if you want film grain to increase or decrease as you shoot. Um, a lot of the famous things used in a, good, a lot of good cinematics is a uh, dirt mask. Um, dirt mask will stay uh, steady throughout your scene, but if you want to change that, say you're going from dark to light and you want the dirt mask to pop up in the light, you can then add the intensity right here and then keyframe that in. Um, and then a lot of so always remember that the keyframes, there's, so always remember there's really nothing you can't keyframe. So always take advantage of that and play around with the keyframes. And then one other good thing to note is the norm within Unreal is what is called a cubic auto. Um, what that means is every shot is going to start off slow, ramp up to going at, at its fastest, and then slow down again. Um, so see how it's slowing at the end and then it stops and slows up speeds again. That is basically the way these are framed or keyframed. Uh, to change that, what you would do is you can highlight both keyframes and you right click it and right click it. And this is going to give you a bunch of different options. Um, you can play around with uh, these three. Cubic Auto is probably the most popular uh, beyond Linear. Uh, linear just being it'll stay at a constant speed all the way through. So see how it's not speeding up or slowing down, staying at a constant speed, whereas this one is speeding up, slowing down. Um, so you can change both of these to linear. And then now there'll be constant speeds all the way through. Perfect. Um, and then you can also go into the graph and play around with your keyframes within the graph. Uh, this is a little more advanced and I do plan on doing more of an advanced tutorial to teach you guys, you know, all the ins and outs. Um, but hopefully 
everything I taught you right now teaches you how to get started on using Camera Sequencer um, and really bringing out your projects and being more comfortable playing around with the sequencer within Unreal. Um, I know it's a little finicky at times. Uh, I have my own personal issues with it, but overall it's very helpful. Um, just one last tip I will give you. Uh, this is the magnet for snapping. Um, it helps a lot when it comes to dragging things. As you can see, it's kind of snapping right here. Um, so I like turning this on, uh, however you can turn it off as needed. And then the other one is, this is going to be your frame rate for your actual sequence. So if you want to be 60 frames per second, now it's 60 frames per second. If you want to be 24, now it's 24 frames per second. As you see, the numbers are going to be changing. See how it just changed to 120. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope you guys like this one. Um, again, I will be making more of an in-depth one later, but I just want to help you guys get started using Camera Sequencer. Um, so yeah, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.